two days ago, and with every release, you get a new picture of my very cute pet rabbit. Here is Cinnamon lying on the sofa. And uh, in terms of features, there wasn't a huge amount of progress between the previous release and this release, uh, largely because a huge amount of time was spent on two things. The first was giving presentations. So I'm very slow at preparing for presentations. Mm -hmm. And um, I gave a presentation at Built and at CAD Futures. The CAD Futures one is public and posted on here. And hopefully you can share a YouTube link to that as well. Mm -hmm. It's a one hour long presentation and it took a long time to prepare, but I highly recommend it. It is one hour where we go, we, we start from uh, the basic high level, you know, what is open, and then we zoom right down to writing Python code and building stuff. So it's very, very detailed. We talk about how the IC schema works for those who, who are new to it or, or trying to understand how to read the documentation and how these relationships and diagrams work. It's highly informative, or at least we try to make it so. And I would recommend sharing it for, for, for those who haven't seen it already. Even if you know nothing yes. about OpenBIM, this is a great place to begin. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, I, I watch it and uh, it, it is indeed very, uh, very uh, helpful. It goes from the start and uh, then into details, very nice details for who is interested, of course. Uh, so that unfortunately took up uh, maybe, I don't know, one to two weeks of work. <laughs> uh, wow. But another thing which yeah. took up, yeah, I'm very slow with presentations. Uh, another thing which took up a lot of time was this, undo and redo. This is uh, four developers. Uh, took basically a week and a half of uh, trying to crack this problem. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, you know, press this is it's a bit of a boring one, really. You press the undo button, and we sort of expect that to work, but um, yeah, it never worked. <laughs> 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 basically, ever since we rebuilt the entire add on in January for the past seven months, uh, well, I guess six months, undo never worked, and that's just a technical problem, a technical complexity due to how native IFC uh, uh, functions, uh, because you're no longer using Blender as a tool. Blender is simply a um, interface or a client to an underlying IFC system. So the whole Blender undo system was completely detached from the IFC system. So whenever you press undo in Blender, it didn't necessarily mean that it actually undid whatever you did and whatever changes you made in IFC. So synchronizing the multiple undo systems and creating transactions so that anybody can now anybody not just blender bim guys but anybody including freecad or or anyone who's using ic open shell who's editing their ic now can also benefit from undo and redo uh, is, is really exciting so you mean everyone using ifc open shell because this is in in the core of ifc open shell correct correct anyone using ifc open shell now can uh, the, the technical term is uh, use a transaction, but basically undo and redo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because uh, it might be a little bit misleading when we say in IFC, right? Because if you don't include IFC uh, open shell in your processes, then you don't get access to this. Correct, correct. Yes, there are other IFC libraries out there. IFC open shell is not the only one, uh, but it is the only one I think that does undo redo. So mm -hmm. um, exciting. Cool. Yeah, so other than these two big things, which took a lot of my time, it's been mostly uh, stability fixes. So, for example, that column tool, which you saw that bug on earlier, yeah. that was released. Uh, there was a new beam tool, the op creating the openings in the walls. That was a new thing as well. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't show some of the other parametric features of the, of the columns and beams, but they, you know, they're there now. And there were many... Just like that, that material, that, that, that bug was showed up. There were many of those before, which were squashed. And that, that bug, which you saw just now, which is because this is the first time that feature has been released, uh, will again be squashed in the next release. Generally, we have to fix, whenever we introduce a lot of new features, we got to spend another release fixing all the broken stuff <laughs> from the previous release. Yeah, yeah it makes off. sense. It definitely makes sense. Same with the work schedules. I mean, we released all that 4D and 5D stuff, but... Yes with one big bug. Whenever you changed one thing in your schedule, the change never propagated. 
Oh. You know, what's the point of a work schedule which mm -hmm. doesn't propagate your dates? So, um, <laughs> but that's the trade-off, right? When you mm -hmm. when you first start building and releasing a bunch of new features, it's kind of still rough and incomplete, and then you spend your next pass over it, kind of cleaning it up and making mm -hmm. it a bit more stable. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Now, can you please go through uh, the existing roadmap of uh, Blender BIM? I'm really curious how you updated this and um, what are the objectives for the near uh, future? So this is a living document, which means that it keeps on being changed. So currently, these are the, the big items which I'm currently looking at. So a bunch of yada, yada, yada. Uh, this is one we just talked about, is how do you get multi-user editing? How do you have multiple people editing the same data set at the, simultaneously, whether it's file-based or server-based or API or whatever, data-based. This is one the, one thing which is on the roadmap. And uh, unfortunately, a little bit of a long-term thing, uh, but it'll be good yeah. to get a prototype of it working um, so that we at least know it can be done. In theory, uh, there's nothing stopping it from being done, but it'll be good to have, just do some run some early experiments mm -hmm. before we uh, get to it. I understand. Um, BCF, getting the, the, the Google Summer of Code students finished is another uh, short-term milestone we're looking at. So Sorry for jumping in. How long will you keep getting uh, help from uh, the Google Summer of School Code? Oh, I have to check that. I'm not very good. I should check my dates. <laughs> it's basically a summer holiday, so it's not too long. Oh, yeah, okay. It's, it's not years. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> we're, we're talking, um, yeah, a few, few, few months. But hopefully they'll stick around, right? I mean, yeah, um, yeah. Why not? Why not? Exactly. So hopefully we'll get. Uh, well, well, we will definitely get the two things. Since they both students have been making really great progress, Prabhat with uh, the BCF API and um, and a BCF server as well now, and uh, Artur with IDS support. BCF server. What do you mean by that? Well, um, there's two parts of of BCF. There is your uh, server, like, like your cloud system that keeps track of all your issues, right? Uh, most people on projects, they have a yes. CDE of some kind. Yes, exactly. Um, and then there's the client, which is like how you view those problems and uh, locally next to your model and make fixes. And how, how would this server work then? You, you need to use a third-party service. Yeah, so at the moment, it will be just a prototype so that at the least implementers can have something to interact with because let's imagine you want to build something to do with bcf it's not fair if you have to pay for a server just to experiment with your tool hmm. uh, we want to make it accessible to everybody so we'll build a very small simple server that does almost nothing but enough so that you can test your tools and later mm -hmm. on we might connect it to other tools so that you can use github as your um Issue server. management systems, hmm. yeah, server or or whatever would that you want. Be possible? That would be amazing, Absolutely. actually. Absolutely, there's wow. no reason why you can't use GitHub, and and people have done that for already, free. actually. Yeah, yeah, for free. Yeah, why should you pay for it? Yeah, in fact, shout out to the Open Project guys. For those of you who don't know, um, a really great CDE which is growing, which is 100% free and open source, is Open Project. So. If you're looking for a free CDE to replace, I don't know, your legacy uh, traditional closed one, take a look at Open Project, which has support. And it does it even have, you should have some pictures for, um, <laughs> I don't know, BIMI stuff. Hey, we are. Nope. It's going to show some pictures. Defects, yeah, milestones. Uh, oh, come on, show a picture of a 3D model. <laughs> Maybe in their intro video. I'll turn, turn that sound off. Let's try our luck here. Skip, skip, skip. How do they make money? There you go. Oh, well, um, the same way GitHub makes money. Just because the system is free doesn't mean that you had the capabilities to run it on your own premises mm -hmm. with the security considerations you need to make, especially if you're working with government or, um, or private clients. So naturally, it makes sense to pay somebody who is an expert at that. Yeah. Uh, but you can definitely run it for free, and the system is free. There we go. Here's a BIM model viewed on it. Mm. So, yeah, you can see your issue management. And So, shout out to these guys. Please check them out. 
open project, 100% free and open source. So yeah, they, they are also support, uh, well, in progress, creating support for the BCF API version three. And that's one of the things which we are going to integrate with once mm -hmm. this Google project is done. Anyway, a uh, couple of other things. Uh, ah, yes, uh, BSDD is another upcoming specification, which we've built a library for it, but it'll be good to have an interface so that people can play around with it. So unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, that's right. We, we need buttons. Uh, we've got to expose it to people. There is some work being done on facility management. There is a new, I guess you'd call it a successor to Kobe uh, facility management handover specification being drafted and a public draft was released, I don't know, a month, two ago mm -hmm. uh, on the Building Smart forums. So that is in the works and hopefully we will see uh, new FM data tools being released. Of course, more work on drawings. Uh, there's a list on costing and scheduling, which is sort of in flux right now. One of the things we're trying to solve in costing and scheduling is parametric costing and scheduling. So that's where uh, effectively um, IC has the ability to describe rates, productivity rates, which then drive your task times and your, uh, I guess, your, your costs. So for those of you who are interested in joining us on this project, we have started documenting these various relationships. This is a bit technical and it'll take a while to solve this before we can even start writing code. And then when we start writing code, uh, then we got to turn it to buttons that people can play with. But this is definitely something we want to crack is how do you turn costing and scheduling into a parametric endeavor? So I'll just kind of like skim through some of the diagrams we're creating here, which describe the various relationships that we're working with. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, here, here's a simple one, you know, whether we have a calendar inheritance or you know, uh, talking about resources that are used by a task or a work schedule, uh, recurring tasks, and and so on. But anyway, we won't we won't go too deeply into this. It's pretty yeah yeah detailed spec stuff <laughs> but that's def it's unfortunately that it's a glimpse of the work which needs to be done before you get to something like this you know mm -hmm. somebody needs to sit there you know planning out the system before you can write the code and then somebody needs to write the code before you can see the buttons and somebody needs to push the buttons before the button actually works and stop giving error messages <laughs> yeah makes sense but regarding the kind of version the beta version or you know the version that we can try to use in the, on our projects. How how do you feel about that? Initially, I thought it would be sometime this year, and then I kind of restarted from scratch in the beginning of this year, rebuilt everything. Uh, that said, rebuilding it has allowed us to go ten times faster. So that's why we've got all these new four D and five D stuff that would have never been possible with the old system. But that might also, due to the rebuild, starting fresh, have to push the beta release to next year. And the biggest, the two biggest things I believe which are holding back the beta release are the parametric authoring and the drawing generation. Parametric authoring, as you know, as, as you saw, yes, I can throw in a wall, I can throw in, and you, you saw the bugs with it and it will show mm -hmm. just how early it is. And I can throw in some beams and columns, but that's it. Because that's all we've built. I can't even put a door right now. Well, I can. Like I said, like the, the features exist. I can create a door, it just will take me 50 clicks to do so. But mm -hmm. I can't create a door in one click. And that's what we need to build. It's that one click door creation tool. So once we have that working much, much more smoothly, it'll take a few times to get right. You know, we'll go through the objects one by one and we'll, and we'll start just having to distribute project libraries so that yes, anyone can play with it out of the box instead of having to create things from scratch and then see a drawing. Because I think that's that's kind of like the end-to-end the -end workflow. You start from nothing, you draw your walls, your doors, your like a simple, you know, four walls and a roof, and then you click another button and it creates a drawing. We just want get, to get that full workflow going, which you can do right now very painfully, but we want to make it slick. And mm -hmm. that will, when, only when it's slick and somebody goes, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable with this, that, that's when we'll know we can start talking about the beta. Okay. But we're seeing signs of it, right? That, that wall editing just now, that's starting to look slick, um, in, at least in my opinion. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. No, that's true. That's good. That's good. 
progress is progress no matter how small right but actually you did a lot of progress like you like i did not expect it uh, to to get this far this year but you uh, widened the scope of the project by uh, releasing the new the new approach the new system like you said at the beginning of the year right that's right yeah we said drawing walls is not enough we want to do 45d structural analysis lighting analysis <laughs> you know mm. we want to do everything <laughs> and then yes as a result yeah well uh, uh, for, a few things yeah, yeah i get that but then you you get with a foundation that will be relevant for m- many years to come so Correct. you need to look at that as well and that's very important yeah and i think that's the thing about open source and that like we don't rush for a deadline we do what we think we need to do even if it takes more time and at the moment if that means that you know we're we're training new developers we're testing out new parts of the schema we're mm-hmm. we're widening our scope uh, to make sure that when you draw a wall that wall works for everything not just for architectural purposes uh, that that's incredibly important yes that's true do you have a message to deliver if yes, now is the time to do that. <laughs> the message is the same as all the all, as always um, before before we end this call. Anyone can join in. That's the great thing about free software. It's when we say free for those of you new to the term, I'm not talking about zero price. I'm talking about freedom. That you have the freedom to join, to tweak, to change, to break, to tell us we're doing things wrong and we we like it when you do cuz we can fix it. And it's that anyone can join. And the best place to get started is go to osarch.org. There's a community forum and a live chat. Drop in and say hello. Um, my internet's loading. Here we are. There's a community there. Uh, you know, forum, live chat, subscribe to the newsletter. There is a, uh, a wiki as well. I also highly recommend this YouTube video, which I pointed out before. If you're new to IFC, or even if you if you aren't new to IFC, if, if, if you use IFC already every single day, but you are new to native IFC, which is completely different to uh, traditional IFC, where people import and export IFCs. Like we're, we're talking natively authoring IFCs. Uh, this video is a great one to watch. That's it. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much, man, for taking the time. I know how caught up in developing you are. And I really appreciate uh, that you took the time to talk about this. It's very important what you do there. Keep Keep doing it. We need more of you. And we need more of you too, Petru. Like, it's not just developing. <laughs> developing is one tiny part of it. It's a, it's a whole workflow. You need somebody to plan things out before you even write code. Somebody needs to write the code before you can see the button. Somebody needs to see the button before you can push and test the button. Somebody needs to test the button before it actually works properly. Somebody needs to get it working properly before you can document it. Somebody needs to document it before you can write the tutorial. Somebody needs to write the tutorial before you can translate it. You know, like it's, it's, a, it's a, you know, and somebody, and all that needs to happen before you can market it. And it's just, it's a huge, huge, huge um, aspect. And You've seen how how wide the scope is. Anyone can involved in any step of that process. You don't need to know programming. Come join the fun. Yeah, man. But uh, when I, when I'm talking about you, I mean like I really like your relentlessness. Like you, you just don't stop. I <laughs> like you. You just go further and further and further. And this this is very important because you you inspire and motivate so many people to join uh, the forces and. I really, I really uh, applaud you for that. It's this is very important. I really admire you for this. Thank you, Petru. Thank you for taking the time. <laughs>